this, I'm going to start off with, the, this is the, the E4, so it's the 822R E4, and, and, and that number is simply that there are eight uh, RAID bays, two extensional backup bays, and then there's two SSD bays in the back, so that's where the 822R means redundant power, um, and uh, the um, E4 is the Enterprise 4, so that's the particular model of this. This is the Haswell, so it's a Gen 4 processor in it. Um, so, um, starting just with the kind of the basic drive bays, um, so we have a universal uh, drive bay mechanism here, so we can support both SSDs uh, and hard drives in there, so basically you've got no issue, you don't have any adapters or anything else, so you can support both drive uh, types. Um, we have a security lock um, that locks all RAID bays, so if you need uh, a system administrator, who would only have the access to the drive, uh, drive array uh, bays, they would have a key for this. Then we have these two additional bays here. And again, these can be used for um, backup purposes. Um, the actual, uh, this is actually slightly partitions out for the airflow, so you can actually remove these out of the chassis uh, if you need to. There's no actual drives in this one at the moment, but um, you could actually have some backup drives in there. Take those off site and it won't affect the airflow in the system. And these have got individual locks, um, so again, if someone who was an, an off-site backup person, they could, they could have the uh, key for this, and then you've got another key for this one here. Um, so basically, so you've got the, secu the physical security. Right, I'll just show you the, the other side of the, of the server. Um, so um, this has got, as I say, this is an Intel server board that's inside here. It's a micro ATX format. Um, there are four expansion slots, low profile expansion slots, and in fact we've got a dual 10 gig Intel uh, X540 T2 NIC card in there at the moment. Um, the standard features on this are there's dual uh, Intel Gigabit LAN, two USB 3, two USB 2, there's a diagnostics, there's even a system ID light, which um, if you've got multiple Bronto stores in the same installation, you could use that. And um, this has got IPMI, full IPMI in it. Um, there is an option to add a dedicated IPMI NIC um, that you would just plug in and use one of the, one of the slots here. Um, power supplies, there's only one installed here, but it's single or dual uh, redundant. And again, you can start off with a single pass if you want the redundant. Single screw, slide cover comes off and you just literally slot it in and it's just really simple. Just pulls out like that. Um, and this is actually, just, uh, just note here, this is a, see it's got an Intel logo, you probably can't see that on camera, but this is a standard Intel server power supply and it is available globally. Um, and uh, I think Intel say that it's a, that's a five year availability kind of guaranteed on this. So, um, so that's very, very handy. If you need a redundant power supply module in a hurry, they are available from, from all Intel uh, uh, kind of channel partners and resellers. Um, just uh, slide that back in there. Um, so here, this is the actual SSD, but I'm just gonna take that out, you can see uh, there's a single SSD in that at the moment, but it does um, support two. It's hot swappable, um, both drives mount in there, and you could use this if you were doing a um, something with um, a kind of a free BSD or a ZFS type operating system, like for instance FreeNAS or Nexenter Store. You could actually put the L2 Arc and the uh, the Zill Cache actually two SSDs if you like into this. Um, and that just slots in there, and then we have a single s a screw to secure that. Um, slide the cover back off. I've already taken the screws off this, just put that down there. Right, okay, I'm just going to show you what's actually inside the system. Um, so, um, what we've got here is the, the Intel Micro ATX server board. Um, there are the four PCI Express expansion slots. Two of these are, well, in fact, up to three of these are Gen 3. It's got a very clever um, PCI Express switching uh, electronics in there, which is a three-way um, Gen 3 switch. So it actually can direct the, the 16 lanes that come out of the processor appropriately between the RAID module and the expansion slot. So you can actually have all five uh, going off, uh, off the one motherboard, which is quite rare. Um, so here is the, the typical uh, modules that we use. This is an HBA module, so it's a SAS or SATA. It's a PCI Gen 3. So very, very good for throughput if you're going to want to have build a, an array of SSDs. Um, then we have here 
This is the other standard module. This is actually the uh, this is the RAID module, um, and again, this has got a gig of cache. It's an LSI uh, 9208 base controller. Um, it's got support there for the LSI cache cade if you want to use SSD caching, um, and again, the two SFF8087 ports, and that literally just clips on in the same location as that and it gives you hardware RAID, so you've got the software RAID or hardware RAID. Um, the way that the um, drives are wired up in this standard version of the E4 is that this controller talks to the eight bays at the, at the, at the front there, then we then have the six SATA 6 gig ports off the motherboard. Two of those go to the SSD bays and two goes to the, uh, the B1 and B2 bays, which are bays 9 and 10 essentially at the front. Um, we do have different RAID controller options, so you can actually have all 12 bays coming off a single controller if you prefer to do that. Um, four memory expansion slots, so you can put 32 gigs of ECC memory in there. It uses a standard boxed Intel Xeon processor with the standard factory cooler, and actually the, this is the Haswell version, they are very, very quiet. Um, and we have some custom programming for the fan control for this particular chassis on the board to make sure it stays very, very quiet, but obviously the cooling is maintained. Um, this fan here in particular, if you've got some very hot running network cards, this is a dual 10 gig card, for example, if you've got two or three of those, then this fan can be controlled to provide a little bit more airflow to cool those cards, but it still does remain very, very quiet. Um, some other options that you can do, uh, if 12 bays isn't enough, um, you can also, this is a, just a small SATA DOM, that can obviously, that can just show you, that can just clip in there like that and then you can run, there's a special little power cable that goes between the USB port onto that to power it. So you could effectively have the operating system running on a SATA DOM, that's a 4 gig, uh, 4 gig SATA DOM, then you've got all 12 uh, bays, so you could have 10 hard drives and 2 cache. Uh, bays here for, for the cash drives. These guys are battery backup or supercapacitor modules. Um, supercapacitors are, are very much replacing the traditional battery backup on RAID controllers now. Um, the reason being that they last the life of the server or certainly five years plus they don't need replacing and uh, basically your data is backed up to flash memory that's stored on the RAID controller. Now um, if you're using the RAID module in here then basically you can mount the BBU for that, or the supercapacitor in this case, actually into this frame here. And I'll just show you on this one how this works. Um, it's very, very simple. There's a single screw, slides open, the BBU goes inside, closes, just tighten that back up. And then you'd have the RAID controller here, and that would just go onto your RAID controller if you had a separate RAID card in there. And again, if you're using the RAID module, which this guy here, there is a cable that comes out of there and then there's a, that would clip onto there and then it's some super capacitor module would then go into a frame like this. Um, there are lots of different types of these, um, particularly if you're using the RAID controllers, there are lots of different shapes and types and we have got various different adapter brackets to support the different types, but the standard one does actually support a lot of the modules. These particular Intel modules do have a, a different plate that goes onto here for that, but we're gonna try and support as many as we can um, for this. So it means that you can actually have a RAID module and a second RAID controller and actually mount both types of backup, both, um, both BBUs or supercapacitors for both cards within the same chassis, which, it, which, which is quite a unique feature. This is the Enterprise 4 and uh, the Enterprise with the IPMI features. So I'm just going to show you a bit of a special one now. Okay, this is the, uh, the M5 version of the Bronto Store. Um, this is a bit of a special edition, if you like, um, because this is a Xeon E5. So this is actually an 8-core version, and uh, in the future this will go up to, the, uh, up to 12 cores when Intel release the, the next generation of uh, the Xeons, which is uh, fairly soon. So um, I'm just going to take the lid off this so you can see what's inside. It is a little bit of bit special. So in fact, inside 
It's a little bit heavy because it's full of four terabyte drives at the moment. But what we've actually got in there, so the processor is liquid cooled and that's so we can keep it very quiet when it's under very heavy load. Uh, we support up to 150 watt uh, processors, so you can have a 2687W in there, uh, which is a 3.1 gig, 8 core, up to 32 gigs of ECC memory. And then what we've got here is the Atto based uh, RAID controller, which and basically all um, the drive bays, all the front drive bays are actually connected to this and you can have the SSD bays as well connected up to this RAID controller. The, um, this particular Atto RAID controller is especially good at handling video and, um, and that's why we use that in this, in this, particular, in this particular model. Um, but yeah, where you actually need a lot of um, processor power for processing this 2K video in real time, uh, real time color correction and stuff like that. And we've been working with a company in the States called Tweak Software um, and uh, the software is called RV. And that's primarily what we designed this uh, initially to, to run, but of course you, any, any kind of uh, software where you need um, a powerful processor, plenty of RAM, and very, very fast drives. So this particular machine is actually full of four terabyte drives. There's 40 terabytes, there's 10 Western Dig uh, four terabyte RE drives in here. So this is, um, will handle um, stereo, 2K uncompressed video, um, and obviously with the, with the power of the 8-core Xeon, you can do real-time effects processing um, on, on that video footage. Um, again, this one actually has got, a, it's got a, an NVIDIA graphics card in it, um, which is just in that uh, slot there. And you can use one of, the, one of the Quadro cards or one of the GeForce cards. So very, very powerful, powerful system, very, very quiet as well. Um, and you've still got, there's another PCI Express slot in there, so if you want to put a fiber channel card or a dual 10 gig card in as well. And finally, this is the, um, the S3 version or the, the kind of entry level version of it. It doesn't have all the features of um, the E4. Um, in other words, it, it, it doesn't have IPMI, it doesn't have dual redundant power, it's a single power supply, it doesn't have IPMI, but otherwise it's still an Intel server board in here. It's Ivy Bridge based is Xeon E3 V2. But what you'll notice on this one um, is that this has got an LCD display. Um, this one, in fact, has got a, uh, we've got a customized uh, OpenE uh, display on here, um, acrylic panel, sorry, on here. But basically, um, we do a special version of this for OpenE, and it basically means that you can control it through the LCD panel. And that's an option that can go actually on any of the Bronto stores but it's, it's been designed specifically for, for OpenE. So it means that you could completely control, uh, control it from, from this with IP addresses uh, starting up and shutting down, etc. cetera. Um, again, this acrylic panel, um, we've built this to basically any resellers, uh, resellers that want to make this their own product. Um, basically, you can have, we'll, we'll, we'll make you your own acrylic panel up then you can sell it as your own storage product and you can have whatever information that you want on here. So this OpenE1s is kind of a good example of what a customized uh, panel looks like.